If any of you have brothers, you know that brothers love to terrorize their siblings. And in the logger household, when we were growing up, it was the same. There's holes in the walls in the house to prove how much we terrorized each other. We were a competitive bunch. And so we are competitive about our chores. We are competitive about our sports. Some of those holes began to be covered up with furniture. <clears throat> they might still be there. I don't know. I haven't looked for a while. But that's how the logger household was. One day I was roughhousing with one of my brothers. He's a little bit younger than, well, I've got three younger brothers. You can figure out which one, this one, which one this was. It could be the one sitting in the front pew up here. I don't know. But as we normally would, we'd pick on each other. We were wrestling. I was a lot older, a lot bigger. And I pinned him down, put my knees on his arms so he couldn't move. And then I terrorized him by letting spit come out of my mouth a little bit and sucking it back in as brothers love to do to each other. And at one point, that spit just got, fell out a little too far. <laughs> and I couldn't suck it back up. It didn't miss his head, didn't miss his face. It landed right in his mouth. <laughs> and you know, as well as I do, I'm not Jesus, so that didn't like cure anything of him. <laughs> but I think he immediately went and washed his mouth out. That's brothers for you. They love to terrorize each other. I think our society is in some ways like that as well. Our society likes to pin us down and in a sense spit into our face, spit into our mouth in order to make us speak the things that society wants us to say. They want to change the conversation so that we are using the phrases and the words and the terms that they want us to say. So we align with what they want in, in, in order to change the culture. What we see in our gospel today is we see Jesus literally spitting into his hand and touching the ears of this deaf man, touching the tongue of this mute man, and restoring his hearing and restoring his ability to speak. If you know of anyone that is deaf, has been, was born deaf, you know that they cannot speak because it requires them to hear those around them who are speaking for them to be able to form the words in their mouth, to be able to form the words from their tongue. And so they cannot speak as well. So when Jesus performs this miracle in the Gospel, He's not just restoring hearing which, and speech. Speech takes a lifetime in order to grow, in order to be able to speak in the way that we do when we get older. So he was restoring an entire lifetime for this man who had never heard a word that anyone had spoken and had never spoken a word to anyone his entire life. And the other amazing thing about this is he never heard anything that Jesus preached until the point that Jesus restored his hearing. The only thing that this blind or the, that this deaf man did was he was able to see the things that Jesus was doing. And if you've ever met someone that has lost one of their senses, their other senses tend to be a little more keen. And so he sees what Jesus is doing, knows that it's something extraordinary, and he seeks Jesus out because he wants to be healed. He wants to be healed. He wants to be able to hear the Word of God. He wants to hear what Jesus is speaking, what Jesus is saying, what Jesus is teaching. And he wants to be able to sing the praises of God as well. He wants to be able to speak about the things that God has done. And that's immediately what he goes to do when his speech is restored, when his hearing is restored. Even after Jesus has tell, told him not to do it. He was so filled with joy that he couldn't hold it in. He was so filled with the glory of God that he couldn't hold back. And so he gave what he could from this new, newly loose tongue to speak about our God. 
What we see in Jesus in healing this man is we see a fulfillment of our first reading today from the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah says, Then the eyes of the blind will be opened, the ears of the deaf will be cleared, then the lame will leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. This is a prophecy from Isaiah telling us what the Messiah is going to look like when God comes again, what it's going to look like when God comes to this earth, when the Messiah comes. It's going to be this, this restoring of all of these things that have been broken because of sin. The reading from Isaiah goes on to say, Streams will burst, burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The last time that we saw this wilderness becoming streams of water was when Moses struck the rock and water came forth to give enough water for all of the Israelites who were wandering in the wilderness. It was that moment when God was present with him, leading him through all of, the, all of this wilderness and all of this barrenness in which God gives life through the water that he gives to them. And so what Jesus is doing in this gospel is he's saying, God is present with us. I am God. I am able to restore these things that have been lost because of sin. And I think what Jesus is telling us today as well, here in 2021, is that in the wilderness in which we are wandering, in the desert in which we are, in which we are walking he is restoring our hearing. Maybe not our physical hearing. Maybe we can hear just fine. But He is hearing the ears of our heart. He is healing the ears of our heart so we can hear the Word of God. That then we can take that Word of God that we hear and let, allow it to transform us so we can begin to live as God intends for us to live so that it can loose our tongue and we can speak the things of God in the world. A world which wants to hold us down and spit into our mouth and tell us what to say. We need to allow God to touch our tongues and to begin to speak those things of God into our world. Sp to speak the truths about who we are as human beings. To speak about the dignity of who we are, who we are from conception till natural death. To speak about the dignity of our sexuality. To speak about the dignity of being a man or a woman. These are the things that the culture is trying to tell us what to believe and what to say. And the culture has gone so bad that they even begin to use Jesus' words against us, saying, you can't judge me. The Bible says don't judge. You can't judge me. But what Jesus is asking of us is to look at humanity and say, and speak into the truths of our heart. To speak to those around us and speak to the truths of what God has given us from our very conception. This is what we are called to do as Christians. We are called to transform the culture by the way that we live the li our life, by the way in which we allow the Word of God to transform our hearts, and by the way in which God wants to use our tongue to speak into the world, to speak the truth into the world to transform those around us. The problem is we, have, we become deaf because we've allowed ourselves to be filled with the things that the media is telling us, to be filled with the things that culture is telling us to say and to do and to listen to. But we have to dive into the Word of God. We need to dive and, hear, and to hear the Jesus speak to us in the Gospels. One of the reasons that we stand when we hear the Gospel proclaimed at Mass is because we are called to transform our life. We recognize the dignity of God coming and being with us in this moment. And it kind of teaches us vigilance in our life that then we are to, he to take what we hear in the Word and to take it into the world and to transform the world by what we have heard at the Mass and in the readings. We have this gift let us not squander it. We have the gift of hearing. Let us allow it to transform us. We have the gift of speech. Let us use it in the way that God intends for us to use it. In fact, when we are baptized, when we are baptized as little babies, 
we have our ears and our mouths blessed so, we may, so that we may hear the Word of God, that we may go into society, we may go into the world and to speak it. Because that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to live out this faith that we have said yes to. He wants us to live out our baptismal promises that we have responded and we renew every Easter. To renew those promises to live our faith as it is intended to be lived. I think another thing that Jesus is telling us in our gospel today is that we are body and soul. We are not just a, we are not just a soul. We are not just a body. We are not just material. We are not just we are not just spirit. We are both. And so he takes material things. He takes spit in this instance. In another instance, in order to cure someone's blindness, he spits into the ground, he creates a mud, and he wipes it on their eyes. He uses material things in order to show how he is restoring their blindness or their hearing or their speech. In our lives as Catholics, we use material things to speak about invisible realities. We use visible signs to speak about invisible realities which give us grace. We call those sacraments. In every single one of the sacraments that we receive, there is some visible sign that is speaking to the invisible reality that we receive when we, have, when we receive that sacrament. When we are baptized, we use water that is poured over our heads as the visible sign of the invisible reality of the fact that our sins are taken away of the invisible reality that we are made a child of God, that we are washed clean and born anew into this life of God. When we are confirmed, we are anointed with oil to show that we have been consecrated for God to live out the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we have been given in that sacrament, to live faithfully the teachings of the church. And the church is the bride of Christ. We live that out in the world. We come and receive the Holy Eucharist in which the bread and wine, visible things of invisible realities of the body and blood of Christ that we receive so that we may be united to Him in this union of two bodies, our body with His. And He continues to do this throughout our lives. That's what He's showing to us in our Gospel today. That these material things and this material world in which we live it's not for nothing, but we use it to get us to heaven. So every step that we take ought to be a step towards eternal life. Every thought, every action ought to be a step towards eternal life. And we use these things that God has given us so we can have a deeper faith. And in having a deeper faith, we begin to speak about what we have been given to those that we encounter. And so let us pray that we may have our ears opened and our tongue loosed, that we may hear the Word of God, and that we may speak it into the world, and that we may transform the culture and the society in which we live to be a culture that is after the heart of God and not after the heart of the devil that has consumed our world that we may have hearts that are for eternity and not hearts for this world.